Hey guys, so today we have an analysis of the polling data from Wednesday, October 24, Thursday, October 25, Friday, October 26, and Saturday, October 27. So I'm going to really run through very quickly each individual poll. We'll spend about between 10 to 30 seconds on each individual poll, depending on how important it is to the overall landscape. Now, Florida Senate race between Bill Nelson and um, Rick Scott. Um, Bill Nelson leading by 4% in the latest Gravis poll. Gravis is a pretty reliable um, polling firm. I mean, it's um, pretty reliable and it's held to a high standard. Nelson up 4 That's pretty much expected by this point. About the same as what he's been leading, if a little bit less than what he's been leading, but still pretty good for the incumbent senator. Next, we have the Michigan Senate race between Debbie Stabenow and John James, Debbie Stab now leading by 16 points. That's pretty, pretty good. Again, Debbie Stab now, again, leading by 16 points. Pretty good news for her. Um, next, we have the New Jersey Senate race, Bob Hugan versus Bob Menendez. Menendez down to just a five-point lead. That's not good news for a Democrat in New Jersey, keeping the Florida and New Jersey in the leading Democratic column. By the way, for Michigan, it's in the safe Democratic column right now. Um, next, we have the Florida governor race between Ron DeSantis and Andrew Gillum. The same group of voters showed Bill Nelson leading by four and Andrew Gillum leading by five. So pretty good news for Andrew Gillum in the latest graphics poll done there. Um, next up, we have the South Dakota governor race between Chrissy Noam and Billy Sutton. This was deemed to be a done deal for the Republicans and Noam, but Billy Sutton definitely providing a big challenge to her. Um, I seriously do not know why it's a tie. South Dakota is a pure red state. Um, when I first saw this poll I had um, beforehand, I had this in the safe Republican column. However, since then, because of this poll, I'm moving it all the way into the leading Democratic column. Swing, and I'm estimating the swing towards the Democrats compared to the previous election will be at least 20 points. If we look at the um, previous one, in 2014, they had a governor election in the state of South Dakota. Dennis Dugard um, won by 45 points. Um, which is pretty phenomenal, and I think that Chrissy Noam will win by about five points, so the swing from this race will be approximately 40 points, which is very impressive for the Democrats this round, especially considering they have a high-profile someone like Noam, who's the incumbent House of Representatives member. Next, we have the Oklahoma governor race between Kevin Stitt and Drew Edmondson. This is pretty good for the Republicans. Could be better. Stitt only leading by seven. Not the worst thing. I'm keeping it in the lean GOP column, even though this result is a likely GOP result. I want to keep it in the lean GOP column, especially considering the unpopularity, unpopularity of the incumbent governor, Mary Fallon. Um, in California, Newsom... Gavin Newsom up at 13 points. That's pretty good news for Gavin Newsom. It's a likely Democratic state. And I also have it in the likely column. Um, next, we have Minnesota, some congressional races. We'll first look at Minnesota 1. We'll also look at New Mexico 2, which is a hotly contested race. And um, I don't know why that's not working. There we go. And we'll also look at New York 22. So looking at Minnesota's first district, this is one that the Democrats think they can pick up. Um, actually, is it a pick up? I'm not 100% sure. Let me just look at Minnesota. Yeah, so it's an open seat. It's currently held by a Democrat. Um, if we go back to the first district, but the reason why it's competitive is that Trump won this by 15 points. Democrats think they can hang on, and I think this is a tilt to Democratic state. In New Mexico's 2nd District, um, your 
uh, this person, it's small, I'll just guess it, is providing a very steep challenge. This is a Trump plus 10 district, and she is only behind by 1.2 Republican Yvette Herald, I guess. Um, I, I personally think that small can pull off the upset here. Um, I don't know, my, just, my gut feeling is that small will win here. Um, but the latest poll shows Harold living by one point. And we have New York's 22nd district, Anthony Brudinsky versus Chloe de Tenney. She's the incumbent, he's the challenger, and the Democratic challenger is providing a pretty good competition. Um, one point and two point, latest poll shows one point. Pretty good news for him right now. So that's it. I'm not covering national polls today. Um, so that's it, Wednesday, October 24. Next, we have Thursday, October 25 polls. Um, we have very high-profile races, pretty much Florida Senate, Michigan Senate. I'm not going to cover California Senate because that's pretty much going to go with Democrats either way. Um, Florida Governor, Georgia Governor, Michigan Governor, California Governor. I'm not going to cover since I just covered that. Um, and then a few congressional races. So... Um, if it's going to load, the latest poll only shows Bill Nelson leading by one. And that's not great news for him, considering he's an incumbent. But um, also considering there are still a number of undecided voters, I still think this is pretty good news for Bill Nelson. Um, latest epic MRA search shows Debbie Stav now only leading by seven. That's kind of a surprise to me. But you can expect this one at the end of the day to go into the Democratic. Next, we have Florida Governor race, Ron DeSantis versus Andrew Gillum. The latest poll from WCTV actually so shows Ron DeSantis ahead, which is a major surprise to me um, personally, since um, Andrew Gillum has consistently led since the primaries. Look at this. No, just, just look at this. Gillum plus two, plus three, plus one, plus four, plus six, plus two, plus four, plus five, plus nine. Plus one, plus one, plus two, plus one, plus twelve, plus six, plus seven, plus four, plus one, plus five, the Santa's plus three. That's a big surprise. I mean, that's seriously something to be considered. Like, just look at how many Gillum leads there have been. One, two, four, six, eight, twelve, sixteen, eighteen. So, something more than 20 leads for Dylan. And suddenly we have, we have a dissenter's lead. This is the first time he's led since the primaries. Um, so that's something also to note. Um, big news there in Florida. In Georgia, Brian Kent versus Stacey Abrams. Stacey Abrams, one of the better candidates to what I think the Republicans will ever so narrowly hold this one. Um, but Brian Kent will definitely be facing a challenge next time around. Um, next we have Michigan's governor race. Um, Epic MRA shows Gretchen Whitmer only leading by five. That's especially considering she led by 14 in the previous poll. Um, and next we have the congressional races. So California 25, 39, sorry, Florida 26, Virginia 10, um, New Jersey 2, I believe. And New Jersey through. So, all these polls show good and bad news for, um, well, most of them show good news for Democrats because in California 39, the Democrat is leading by one. In Florida 26, this is Carlos Cabello's seat. Debbie, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, sorry, <laughs> Debbie McCassell Powell um, is leading by one. Pretty good news for her again. Um, in Virginia, I almost dropped my mouth when I saw this. Jennifer Wexton, the Democratic challenger, is leading Barbara Comstock by 13 points. And she's the incumbent. That is a great sign for Jennifer Wexton. And in New Jersey's 2nd District, Van Drew leading by 17. Can't really argue with that. I'm putting it in the likely Democratic column. And then, then in the 3rd District, again, King Moody, not a pretty good sign for Andrew King. 
We have two more days of polls yet to cover high-profile races in Texas. Democrats falling behind where they want to. I'm not going to cover Texas governor race because it's not really that important. California 10, California 49, Illinois 13, New Jersey 3, Ohio 1, and um, the 7th District in Texas. So, a lot to cover. Um, let's get right after it. Texas Senate race, this is one I think will be close, and I think that Beto O'Rourke could pull off the upset, but it's looking more and more favorable towards Ted Cruz because the latest poll shows Cruz leading by six not great news for him. Uh, not great news for O'Rourke either. Um, in addition, we have the 10th District of California. Um, Josh Harder versus Jeff Denham. Um, Harder leading by two points. Um, which is not a um, which is not a good sign for the incumbent Republican in the state of California, 10th district in California, 49, um, leading Democratic Mike Levin leading by um, 14 points. That's pretty good news for him, and I'm going to put it in the main Democratic column. Um, I don't know why that tab's not closing, but if we look at Illinois, 13, Rondi Davis versus Betsy Lundgren. David's leading by five points in the only poll taken. Can't argue with that. That's good news for the Republicans, um, especially considering we've only won that district by zero point three points. New Jersey three, Tommy Harper versus Andrew Kim. The day after we get a poll showing Kim leading by two, we get a poll showing Tom McArthur, the Republican incumbent leading. This is going to be a hotly contested race till the very end. In Ohio, one, Steve Chabot probably going to go on and win this one. And in Texas, seven, John Culberson versus Lizzie Fletcher. Culberson probably going to win this one again. So we've covered um, all these polls so far. We are almost there. We just have one, two, three, four, five, six polls to go. So let's get after the latest polls. Um... All these polls show varying levels of um, good and bad for both political parties. Um, let's start off with the Michigan Senate race, John James versus Debbie Stabnow. Stabnow only leading by six. That's a big surprise to me, um, considering she was leading by double digits. I, I don't know really what's happening, and because of that poll, I'm moving it from... Actually, because of the previous poll, I moved it from safe into likely, but now I'm moving it because of the plus six poll. Um, I'm going to keep it in likely to get another poll showing these kind of single digit leads. I would move it into the lean Democratic column, likely or free politics, but I want to keep it in the likely column for now. Missouri Senate, one of the hot, hotly contested races. Wally now leaning by four. That's pretty good news. I mean, you cannot argue with that. And because of that, I'm making a really, really, really big change to my 2018 Senate forecast. Originally, I projected 51 Republicans, 49 Democrats. Claire McCaskill narrowly held on in Missouri. But because of the latest poll from the Missouri scale, I'm moving Missouri into the tilt Republican column. That means that McCaskill will not win her re-election that I am predicting and um, that also gives the Republicans one game. That's good news. Good, good news for the Republicans in the state of Missouri because of that one poll. Michigan Governor race for Bill Stewart versus Gretchen Whitmer. Whitmer only leading by five and five. That's not great news for Gretchen Whitmer in Illinois. Six, the Democrat leading by two. It is a toss-up. Clinton won it by seven. Romney won it by eight. This is going to be a wholly contested race. Democrat leading by two, can't argue with that. Pennsylvania 10, um, Scott Perry versus George Scott. Um, it's leaning GOP. I would put it in the tilt GOP column considering that the New York Times pretty reliable on the show. The two point lead there. And final poll, Utah 4 showing a tie 45-45 between Mia Love and Ben McAdams. So that's it. For today, tomorrow I'll be coming out with a lot of info, we'll be covering a lot of polls.
Thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below and I'll see you all in the next one.